Hi, Ben here. When a chemical bond is formed, the molecular energy of the system changes. I talked about this in my video on molecular orbital theory, where I explain why dihydrogen exists in a lower energy state than two individual hydrogen atoms. We use the term bond enthalpy to describe the energy change of a system when a chemical bond is created or destroyed. You might have seen a table of average bond enthalpies in a textbook or in lessons. These show the average energies of chemical bonds across multiple different chemical systems. The higher the energy change, the stronger the bond. On average, for example, carbon-hydrogen bonds are stronger than carbon-carbon bonds. But what if you want to know how strong a specific bond is in a specific molecule? Well, today I'm going to show you how to use Orca and IQMOL to calculate the energy of a specific bond. We're going to do this by first simulating the energy of a molecule of butane and looking at the total molecular enthalpy using Orca. Then, we're going to use IQMOL to split this carbon-carbon bond, which will leave us with two molecular fragments. Each single chemical bond can be thought of as containing two electrons, so we're going to split the bond homolytically, which means we'll put one unpaired electron with each molecular fragment. In curly arrow notation, we show this by using a single-headed arrow to show electron movement and a dot to symbolise a single unpaired electron. By the way, chemical species with a single unpaired electron are referred to as radicals. This leaves us with two molecular fragments to simulate. In this example, a methyl radical and a propyl radical, which we will quickly do using Orca. We can then use the enthalpy values of these fragments, along with the enthalpy of butane, to calculate the enthalpy of this carbon-carbon bond. If you'd like to work alongside me, take a minute now and download and install Orca and IQMOL. Both are free for academic use, and links are in the description. Ready? Start off by making a brand new directory on your computer. To run an Orca calculation, you need two things, an input file and an XYZ coordinates file of the molecule you want to simulate. We'll start off by making the XYZ file using IQMOL. IQMOL is a very simple molecular modeling program, and all we're going to do with this is draw butane. So if we go to this uh, hammer and screwdriver button, select that, we're then in build mode. If we make sure that this is on carbon, then if we left click in this blue window, we will place a carbon atom. And then if we left click and drag, we will place a second carbon atom. We'll then repeat that twice to put the four carbon atoms which form the skeleton of butane. To place the hydrogen atoms, we will then click this button here, which adds the hydrogens, and you'll see that that's automatically added the correct number of hydrogen atoms for each carbon. And then if we click this arrow with an E shape, it will do a very crude energy minimization and give us an approximation of a low energy geometry of butane. We'll just save this as an XYZ file, so we'll go to File, Save As. We'll navigate to the butane directory we've specially made for this calculation, and we'll call it butane.xyz. Then just hit Save, and we're done with IQMOL for now. Now we need to make the input file. So we're going to open up a text editor. I tend to use Notepad, and the input file will only be a few lines of code. On the first line, we'll declare the functional we're going to use. I like using the PBE0 functional, seems to give good accuracy. We're then going to declare what we actually want Orca to do, and we want it to optimize the structure, and we also want it to generate analytical frequencies so we can be sure that the structure is a valid structure. Finally, we're going to declare the XYZ file, what molecular coordinates to work on. So we put asterisk XYZ file, the first number we place is the charge, which is zero, and the second number is the multiplicity. Now for butane, which contains no unpaired electrons, this is one. So the multiplicity is essentially number of unpaired electrons add one. So that's one, and then we'll put butane dot xyz, and then a final asterisk. And we go to file, save as, navigate to the butane directory, and we'll call this butane.imp and we'll be sure to save it as all file type so it doesn't save as a .txt file. We can then hit save and we can close this. Now all we have to do is run the calculation. So if we click in this address bar, type cmd, that will open up the command line or get to the command line in any other way and navigate to the correct directory. And the command is orca 
butane.imp greater than butane.out. And then we hit enter and that'll take just a few minutes to run. So that finished in about 11 minutes. And as you'll see, it's generated lots of files for us to look at. The main one we want to look at is this .out file. So we'll just open this up in Notepad or any other text editor. And this file contains lots of useful information for us. We're going to go right to the very bottom just to confirm a few things. So first off, the total runtime. Um, and we're also looking for this magic phrase, orca terminated normally, which means that it reached the end of its calculation. There are lots of energy terms within here, but we're going to scroll up just to find the vibrational frequencies. Um, so that's the one above the infrared spectrum, so right here. And what we're doing is just checking that there are no negative frequencies in this area. If you see a negative frequency, Orca has made a mistake. That shouldn't happen for the purposes of these videos, but if you ever find a negative frequency, hit me up in the comments and I'll help you out with that problem. Anyway, this is a correct calculation. We can be pretty confident with the numbers that it comes out with. So we're going to go near the bottom to find the total enthalpy term, which is this term right here. So we just need to make a note of this number and we'll get back to it at the end of the video. We can now close the out file and it's time for us to perform the methyl and propyl calculations. So we'll just make a couple new folders. And then we need to place in the .xyz files. So we're going to reopen IQmol, and we're just going to click and drag the butane.xyz file into IQmol. Now, to make the propyl radical, what we're going to do is we're going to use this wand tool. We're going to click and drag around these four atoms, and we're just going to hit this X button to delete this selection. Then we're going to go to File, Save As. We'll navigate into the Propyl directory and we'll call this Propyl.xyz. Now we'll just repeat that by clicking and dragging this butane fragment into here. And then we're going to click and drag the rest of it, delete that. And we're going to save this remaining fragment in the methyl folder and we're going to simply call that methyl.xyz. So we can close IQmol for now. Now we need to make some input files so we can make these from scratch again but I'm just going to copy the butane.imp. So we'll start off with the methyl radical so we'll just copy the imp file. We'll rename this methyl.imp and then we'll have to edit it so first off, and most obvious, we need to change this .xyz so that it looks for methyl.xyz instead of butane. The second change is we need to change this multiplicity number. Remember, multiplicity is equal to the number of unpaired electrons plus one. In butane, none of the electrons are unpaired, but in the methyl radical, we have one unpaired electrons. We add one to that, we get the multiplicity, which is two. Now that we're sure that this is correct, we can hit save, we can close the input file, and we'll open up the command line. We'll ensure that we are in the correct directory, which is the butane methyl directory, and then we simply type orca methyl.imp greater than methyl.out. We'll hit enter to run this calculation. So now the methyl calculation is finished, and just as with the butane calculation, we've got lots of files generated here. We're going to have a little look at the out file and just confirm that the calculation is valid. So if we scroll down to the bottom here, we'll see that orca terminated normally, and again, it tells you how long the calculation took. If we scroll up, we'll see that we have an enthalpy term here, which we will make a note of to use at the end of the video for the calculation, and then we'll just keep going up to look at the vibrational frequencies and we see that we have no negative vibrations here which means that again this is a valid structure. Incidentally if you're interested in the vibrational frequencies and the infrared spectroscopy of these fragments check out my video series on simulated infrared spectroscopy. So we can close the dot out file because we've got the enthalpy term which is all we need 
which means that the last thing for us to do is to go into the Propile directory and run the simulation for the Propile radical. So we'll copy over and put the input file into here and we'll edit this. So again, we'll change the multiplicity to two because remember the Propile radical has an unpaired electron and then we'll adjust the butane.xyz to be propyl.xyz. We'll save this, close it, and then we'll rename this as propyl.imp. Now we'll run the Orca simulation. So we'll type cmd in here, hit enter to open the command line. We'll ensure that we are in the correct propyl directory and we'll type orca propyl.imp greater than propyl.out. And then we'll hit enter to start running that calculation. When we see the input line return, we know that it's finished the Orca calculation, so we can close the command line and then we'll open up the .out file again just to check everything's worked with this calculation too. We'll scroll to the bottom. Excellent, it tells us that Orca terminated normally and it tells us how long the calculation took to perform. We have a total enthalpy term here, which we will take a note of for the calculation at the end of the video. And then we'll scroll up just to see the frequencies. And we can see that there are no negative frequencies here in the vibrational frequencies section. So we know that the result of the calculation is likely to be valid. We'll close this out file because we have everything we need. Now that we've used Orca to simulate both the final molecule and the two fragments that are produced when we homolytically break the bond we're investigating, we can search the .out files and extract the total enthalpy terms to calculate the specific bond enthalpy. Note that the enthalpies are calculated in Hartree units, or EH. We'll convert to kilojoules per mole at the end, don't worry. On the left, we have the calculated total enthalpy of a molecule of butane, which is around minus 158 Hartrees. On the right, we'll note that the total enthalpy of the methyl radical is just above minus 40 Hartrees, and the energy of the propyl radical is just below minus 118 Hartrees. To calculate the bond enthalpy, we add the two fragment enthalpies to get just above minus 158 Hartrees, and then we calculate the difference between the molecular enthalpy and the total fragment enthalpy. Finally, we multiply this difference by 2625.6 to convert the number into kilojoules per mole, which gives us a resulting calculated bond enthalpy of minus 374 kilojoules per mole. This is very close to what we'd expect, which is always nice. I encourage you to take this further. You should be able to use the same technique that I've just shown you to calculate the enthalpy of the middle carbon-carbon bond in butane, or even to take this further, draw more complex molecules and explore which functional groups affect bond enthalpies and by how much. If you found this useful, give me a subscribe or a like, it really helps the channel, encourages me to keep making videos, and please hit me up in the comments or on my Twitter to show off what you find out using this technique. I love hearing from you all and I'm looking forward to seeing what experiments you get up to. Till next time.